The first thing you would notice about my brother Martin was his flaming red hair and his smiling, freckled face. He was the oldest of the four children in our family. Born on July 15, 1920, I was nine years old when Martin left to join the Army. Martin was my hero. I idolized him. I remember the thrill I had when Martin sent me a book, Silly Willie, for my birthday. Inside the front cover is inscribed in his bold, legible print, To Feff, from Mart. Martin gave me my nickname. I was proud of that. I loved hearing people praise him for his good humor, track prowess, and performances on stage and over the radio. In high school, Martin and his friend were in senior hits as Ethelbert and Aloysius, the Lord and Duke of Destiny, which Martin wrote. Afterward, they were asked by the radio station KVNU to do a series on the air, which they did. As a student at Utah State University, Martin had the lead in the play, What a Life by Henry Aldrich. The author of the play came to see the performance and said that Martin was so good, he felt he'd written the part for him. Most of all, Martin loved people and they loved him. Everyone seemed to feel that he was Martin's best friend. When he left for the war, Martin took his typewriter. Before he left for basic training, he made arrangements with the Herald Journal, the local daily newspaper, to print a periodic column about the soldier boys from Logan. In an article dated March 3, 1941, Martin wrote, at 8 a.m., approximately 99 men will report at the 145th Field Artillery Armory for one year's active training. Then, all 99 will move to San Luis Obispo, California. I have an idea that centers around a column from the boys at camp to you here at home. For the next year, I'm going to try to keep all of you informed as to what's going on, all of you mothers, dads, girlfriends, boyfriends, aunts, uncles, well, everyone who cares a hoot. What happens to 99 fellows? I want to tell you what happens to Private Joe Bloke, what they feed him, where he goes on leave, what he does on maneuvers, what he thinks, what he likes. What I want to do is a heck of a lot. I only hope I can. When you sit down around your supper table or sit in your easy chair to read the paper, I wish you would say a prayer for the 99 fellows who are sleeping tonight as soldiers at the 145th Field Artillery. When he went off to war, he first served in the 145th Field Artillery an activated Army Reserve unit from Logan, but he yearned to fly. After obtaining a transfer to the Army Air Corps, he was disappointed to find that he couldn't be a fighter pilot. Nevertheless, he was determined to serve in the air and was permitted to transfer to an air commando unit to fly a liaison plane. Martin participated in the battle for the Philippines. While stationed on Negros Island, he learned that his old outfit, the 145th Field Artillery, was also on the island. The day after his reunion with some of his old buddies from Logan, he learned that a detachment of them was surrounded by the enemy in deeply forested mountains. He was assigned to fly a resupply mission to his imperiled friends. 
he was shot down behind enemy lines, and the crash site was never found, and his body was never recovered. The official combat history of Martin's squadron says that he was finally declared killed in action, but we never received that word. In my mother and father's lifetime, his death was never officially confirmed. They lived out the rest of their lives, never really knowing whether he was alive or dead. Even though I was just a little brother, for years I had dreams that Martin was found and that he was alive. What my mother and father must have gone through. In addition to the Air Medal and the Purple Heart, Martin posthumously, by order of the President, was given the Silver Star, next only to the Congressional Medal of Honor, for his heroic work and determination to complete his mission despite great danger and for gallantry in action above and beyond the call of duty. The only member of his squadron to receive it. It is this highest award that can be given to a soldier. He was also awarded the Purple Heart given to the families of those who died in the war. In memory and in tribute to Martin, my mother wrote this poem. Somewhere there is a grave, unmarked, unknown, where earth and heaven meet to form this place, a wild and lonely spot no man shall know. Free is the soul to him who lies below. The same protecting sky, the canopy, this rich and loamy earth, the gentle bed, and where he lies, do violets bloom in spring? And in the early morn, do robins sing? I wonder if he lies facing the east, where rosy-fingered dawn will first caress. And are there mountains there? He loved them well. It was on a mountain that he fell. Somewhere there is a grave that only God can find. I see it in my dreams, imprisoned there, while wind and sun and rain of week on week make this last resting place serene and sweet. Mm -hmm.